Okay, we are discussing mole relationships and chemical equations in sections 5.6 and 5.7. You're going to need to learn, know the information we learned prior, such as the balancing chemical equations and the molar masses in order to be successful in this chapter. Now, the molar relationships all rely on the conservation of mass. The reason for that is the whole purpose of the conservation of mass is it's saying that the total mass is not going to change. And essentially that means that the products are going to equal the reactants when it's all said and done. So if we look at this example specifically, we have 215.8 grams of the silver reacting with 32.1 grams of the sulfur. If we add those together, You'll notice it's 247.9 and that's what the conservation of mass is teaching us it's teaching us that the, what's there at the beginning is going to be there at the end the reason for that is quite simply the molecules don't disappear they might look differently for instance this is, seems a little bit darker over here they're going to look differently they may turn into a gas but molecules don't just vanish they just rearrange In the last chapter, we spoke about balancing chemical equations, and we talked about how, in the first section, it talked about how the molecules, the Avogadro's number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and we could say that one atom of iron, two atoms of iron and three atoms of sulfur are coming together. Well, when we looked at the the Avogadro's number and we converted everything to moles we could also say two moles of iron is reacting with three moles of sulfur to produce one mole of Fe2S3 which is actually more reliable because remember moles is the universal unit we can go from one compound to another one atom to another one element to another all by going through moles but we have to go through moles first so rather than talking about these as individual atoms and molecules, which nobody ever looks at one atom at a time, it's easier if we look at moles. Because then we can start dealing with grams of stuff rather than 0 .0000 whatever grams. So when we're looking at the mole ratio or how they're related to one another, for instance, Fe and S, for every 2Fe, we need 3S which is why we have it here. Two moles of Fe and three moles of S. Or Fe and Fe S3. <coughs> You'll notice it's a two to one ratio. That's why we have the two and the one there. H2 and N2. If we're looking at this one just to make sure we know what we're talking about. For every three H2 that are used, there's one mole of N2 that's also used. So when we're looking at this, we're looking for a three to one relationship. That means that one's automatically out. So if we look over here, three and one, one and three. Well, one has to be with the nitrogen. One here is with the hydrogen. Here we go. That's the only one with the correct molar ratio. If we're looking at NH3 and H2, NH3 and H2, we look for a 2 to 3 relationship. Well, that one doesn't work because that's not 2 to 3. These two are possible. The 2 needs to be with NH3. Here, the 2 is with NH3. And here's the 2 is with the NH3, so that's okay. And then the other one is the H2. We need the 3 with the H2. Well, here's 3 with the H2. Here, it's with N2 this time. That means that's going to be the correct one. We can use these as part of a conversion factor. We can actually use those coefficients and those ratios as a conversion. So... What I always do whenever I write a conversion with a chemical equation is I write down what I know and what I want to know. 
how many moles of Fe203 is what I want to know. So how many moles? So I'm going to put X moles because that's what I'm looking for. Can form from 6.0 moles of oxygen. That's what I know. To go from one compound to another, you have to have it in moles because that's the only universal unit. So to go from here to here, make sure that your equation is balanced and then you're going to use the coefficients in front. So for instance, 6.0 moles of O2 over 1. We have moles of O2 on the top. That means I want to put moles of O2 on the bottom of the next one. The coefficient for that is 3, and that's where I got that number. That's the coefficient. Where I'm going to is the Fe203. That coefficient is 2. So it's going to be 6 times 2 divided by 3. Notice where you're going to is always on top. Where you're coming from is always on bottom. Let's try another example. How many moles of Fe? That's what I'm looking for. <clears throat> are needed to react with 12.0 moles of oxygen. It's already a mole, so we can go straight to the coefficients. So, 12 moles of oxygen over 1. We have moles on top. That means I want to put moles on the bottom of the next one. 3 is the coefficient for that. We're going to Fe. So that means 12 times 4 divided by 3. That comes out to be 16.0 moles, which is C. Now we're going to add masses into it. And the only difference here is we're going to include the molar mass from the periodic table. So these will be a bit longer. But we're basically going to try to have the same pattern. For instance, we're going to write down what we want to know and what we do know. Suppose we want to determine the mass of NH3. So that's going to be our question. We want to know how many grams of NH3 that can be produced from 32 grams of N2. Now remember, in order to go from one compound to the other, in order to use these coefficients, it has to be in moles first. So we need to get from grams to moles. So in order to do that, we're going to use the molar mass, which is what we learned a couple days ago. Then we go from moles of N2 to moles of NH3. Now we can use the coefficients because we're already in moles now. To get from moles to grams, we're going to use molar mass again. But this time, we're going to use the molar mass of the NH3. So we need to go from 32 grams to moles to moles to grams. So before we start that, why don't we figure out the molar mass of N2. That's two times, if you look on the periodic table, here's nitrogen, 14.0. Which is equal to 28.0 grams is equal to one mole. And we have NH3, which is nitrogen and hydrogen. We have one nitrogen and three hydrogen. We already know nitrogen is 14.0. Hydrogen is over here on the left-hand side. It's 1.0. So we're going to add those together to make 17 grams is equal to one mole. So now we have the molar masses and we have the coefficients. And so we can actually do the problem now. So 32 grams of N2 
over one. Grams of into on the top, you're going to put that on the bottom of the next one to go from grams to moles. So that means 28.0 grams is going to go on the bottom. One mole of into will be on the top. Moles of into on the top, that means that's going to go on the bottom of the next one. We are right here in our conversion. We need to get from here to moles of NH3. In order to do that, we're going to use coefficients. The invisible number there is 1. Then we're trying to get 2 moles of NH3. Coefficient there is 2. Moles of NH3 on the top, you're going to put it on the bottom of the next one. Whatever's on top goes on bottom. It's all diagonal. So moles of NH3. Here's our molar mass of NH3. One goes with moles. 17.0 grams is the molar mass. So that means it's going to be 32 divided by 28 times 2 times 17. That comes out to be 58.2, or just 58 grams of an H3, because we only have two digits there. All right, let's try another one. We have how many grams of O2, so we're looking for grams of this, to produce 45.8 grams of Fe2O3. Once again, notice we're in grams, not in moles. That means that we need to get it to moles before we can do anything else. Once we have it in moles, then we can use the coefficients to get to moles of O2. And then we can go to moles to grams. Now to get to grams to moles of this, we're going to need the molar mass of Fe2O3. To get from moles to grams here, we're going to need the molar mass of O2. Okay, so that means we have a couple calculations to do before we continue. <coughs> for Fe2O3, we have Fe and we have O. Now you might remember from last time, F um, o is 16.0 and then Fe is right here 159.6 grams is equal to one mole. We also need, so we have that one figured out, Fe203. Now we need oxygen. So oxygen is two times, once again, the molar mass is 16.0. Okay, so now we have the molar mass of both of them. And we can start doing the calculation. We're starting off with 45.8 grams of the Fe2O3. Grams of Fe2O3 on the top, so that means that's what we're going to put on the bottom. That is equal to 159.6. That's equal to one mole. So we have moles on the top, which means we want moles of Fe2O3 on the bottom of the next one. 
we are right here now in our question. We go from here to moles of O2, we're going to use coefficients. Coefficient of Fe2O3 is 2. And where we're going to is oxygen. And that's coefficient is 3. We have moles of oxygen on the top. It means I'm going to put moles of oxygen on the bottom of the next one. Now we can go from moles to grams by using the molar mass of oxygen. So one mole of oxygen is 32.0 grams of oxygen. So that means 45.8 divided by 159.6 times 3 divided by 2 times 32. And I got 13.77 when I did that. But we only need three significant figures, so that makes it 13.8 grams of O2, which gives us B. That's actually the exact same question. Okay. The reaction between hydrogen and oxygen produces 13.1 grams of water. How many grams of oxygen are needed? I'll give you a few minutes. I'll give you a few seconds to start this on your own. All right, so we have it in grams, which means we need to get it to moles first. Because to get from here to here, we have to have it in moles. Then we need to get to moles of O2. To get from grams to moles, you're going to need the molar mass of water. To get from moles to moles, you're going to need the coefficients. And then from moles to grams, you're going to need the molar mass of oxygen this time. So, water... We have hydrogen and oxygen. We have two hydrogen and one oxygen. Look on the periodic table. Hydrogen is 1.0. That equals 2.0. And oxygen is 16.0. Which means 18.0 grams per mole is your molar mass for water. Oxygen is two times, well here's our mass right here, 16.0 is 32.0 grams is equal to one mole. Alright, now we have the molar masses we need, we can set it up. 13.1 grams of water over one. We have grams of water on top. Grams of water needs to be on the bottom of the next one. From our molar mass, we can see that 18.0 is the molar mass of water, and that equals one mole of water. We are right here in our conversion. We need to get from moles of water to moles of oxygen. So moles of water on the top, which means we want to put moles of water on the bottom of the next one. We're going to use coefficients this time. So, 2 is in front of moles of water, and we're getting 2 moles of oxygen. We are right here in our conversion. We're going from moles of oxygen to grams. 1 mole of oxygen to grams of oxygen. Grams of water cancel, moles of water cancel, moles of oxygen cancel, you're left over with grams of oxygen. So it's going to be 13.1 divided by 18 divided by 2 times 32. And that comes out to be 11.6 
grams of oxygen. All right, I hope you understand stoichiometry, but the only way to really get good at it is if you do a lot of practice. So there are plenty of review activities inside this folder.